So welcome. Today we're going to look at doing uh, an image, something like this. So it's a composite image with uh, two different images using lending, uh, layer lending, layer blending modes, and also the gradient tool. So these are two images I have here. So there's this portrait and then this landscape image, which both come from pixels.com. Uh, you can find them there. I'll put a link below to where you can uh, find the images. So yeah, let's get started. So the first thing we, we're going to do is we're going to make a selection here. For that, we're going to use, if I right click on my quick selection tool and choose my object selection tool. So if I put my mouse over that, we see we get a, a pretty decent selection. There's one or two little issues that just need to be ironed out. So I'm just going to click to make my selection. Uh, I can also click to add, so I'm going to add that into the selection. And now that's not going to work. That's not going to work, so I need to use a different selection tool to use these. So I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool. Select it. At the top here, make sure add to selection is enabled, because if we have new selection, it'll delete what is currently selected. So I'm going to use Control-1 to zoom in, or Command-1 if you're using a Mac. And then we're just going to select along this edge, continuing on from, from where it was. And we want to just exclude this part of the sofa. I'm not going to use all of this image anyway, so it'll be cropped a little bit at the bottom part. Uh, and then we just select another, and then I can double click. I don't need to close the loop. Uh, and then come over here. And then we had a little gap here. Yeah, so we want to select, select this here, like so. So again, double click to make my selection control zero or command zero. Zoom out, and that looks good. Now we have our selection made. We're just going to refine it. So just before I actually do that, I just spot one other little issue here where there's a small gap. So I'm going to just zoom in here and make sure that this is. Uh, also selected. Okay, control zero and then select a mask. So we're just going to use this just to soften up our edges a little bit. So I'm going to smooth it, say 10, and then uh, I think one is enough for our feathering. Uh, yeah, that looks okay for what we for what we need for this case. So I click on okay. So now I'm going to select my move tool. So move tool, shortcut V on the keyboard. So select my move tool and I'm going to move it to this image here. So in order to do that, I'm going to click my left mouse button, hold the mouse button down, drag it to the tab of the other image and then drag it and drop it over the image. Okay, so you can see here that we're not going to use this bottom part at least. So yeah, so we can position it right about here and that's, that looks fine. So the first thing that we want to do is just check our layer blending mode. So which layer blending mode will get this to kind of work best. So I think probably multiply is probably good. We want to also remove the color from this. So what I'm going to do to remove the color is just simply add a black and white adjustment layer. And we're going to create a clipping mask out of that so it only affects the layer below. So I'm going to go to Layer and Create Clipping Mask, or Alt Control G or Alt Command G from Mac. Uh, so only this is in black and white. So you can see the way it only uses the tones of black and white for that, um, where it mostly hides things that are of a lighter tone and shows things that are not. Yeah, so that's fine. So there's two things here we might want to do. We might want to hide the rest of the background, so around here. And then we will use a gradient as well. So, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold control click. So control click on this layer one, so the layer of the person. And I'm going to create a mask on, use that as it for a mask on the, the layer behind. So I'm going to go down to my background layer and I'm going to click on create new mask. And now we have a nice mask here. 
So there might be a case where you don't want to 100% hide it. So maybe I want to keep the background image a little bit in, but just slightly faded. So to do that, you can double click on your layer mask and that pops up the properties panel. And in that you can lower the density. So you could lower it to about say 85%. With the back bit background being transparent, it might be a bit difficult to see. So what we could do is, is we can add a blank layer. We're just going down to the layer panel here and adding a new layer, making sure that layer is at the bottom and filling it with white. So I'm going to go to my bucket tool, find it. I think it might be in here in the legacy tools or yes, paint bucket tool. And I'm going to fill that with white. So I'm pressing X on the keyboard because my four, uh, background color was white. Uh, I'm going to fill that with white. So now it just makes it a little bit easier to see when you're changing your uh, the density of your mask. So I click it back on my mask again and you can play with your density to see where you're kind of happy, how much you want the background to be faded, uh, to be faded in. We can also, using our, our black and white adjustment, we can also make further adjustments to the foreground. So if we want to highlight, you know, make the face less visible. We can darken down the reds, maybe the yellows a little bit. Maybe we want to brighten up certain features. Uh, also, maybe we want the, the hair to appear a little bit more. Uh, well, maybe we want it masked out a little bit more that it's not so strong. So we're going to use a, a gradient mask now. So I'm going to create a mask here on layer one, which is our layer with the person on it. So I'll just simply go down, new mask. And then we're going to choose the gradient tool, which is over here, shortcut G on the keyboard. So with Photoshop 2023, we have live gradients now, which is really easy because before you would have to go back and recreate the gradient. So if you don't have Photoshop 2023 or you're working with an older version, you may have to, uh, if your gradient isn't to your liking, so we're just clicking and holding down. Uh, I want to actually reverse this gradient because I'm not happy with it. So I can just click on or unclick the reverse. Uh, so we can get more of our less detail from the actual person and more from the actual image that we're using as well. Uh, and of course, if you want to, you could, uh, if you want to fade this layer, lower the opacity, you can also do that. And because we're working with live gradients, when we go back to our layer mask, our gradient is here and it can be re-edited, changed. You can also add points to it. So at the, at the moment, this is two points added to it. So we can change these points like so. We can move the gradient point. Uh, so where it starts kind of fading uh, to uh, going from white to black. Uh, and we can also move that point. So we've got this point for our black. And we've got these points for our, our, our white. And we can add further points if you want to. So along the gradient, when you see the white pointer with a plus sign, click on it and you can add another another little pointer to it. So, and we can just select it and and, uh, and uh, delete it if we, if we no longer want it. So we have four layers. We have our background layer which is just white at the back to so we can see uh, the effect of the uh, changing the layer density here on the second layer which is our layer with the background with the landscape in it and then on top of that we have this layer here which is a layer that we cut out from our previous image uh, here and that has been uh, has a mask on it which is using a gradient to and kind of fade out the details that were quite visible because the hair was quite light in color. It's fading, fading that out and giving more focus on, on, on the landscape for us. And then we have our black and white layer, which as you can see, removes the color and gives it a much different kind of feel as well. And then when you're finished, you can just go to layer and flatten your image and save it as a, as a JPEG file. Thank you for watching.